My name is Cheryl Gay. I'm the daughter of Ben McNamee, who with his family of five siblings and his mother and father, William and Margaret, lived at number 12 Acton Cottages. My understanding is that the family came to Canberra in about 1918. William McNamee Senior worked at the Powerhouse, the original Canberra Hospital, and the new building after its completion. It is also believed that he worked at the Cotter Pumping Station. Ben McNamee recalled living in Jardine Street in Kingston in the Powerhouse houses. He may have been about five years old when they first moved there. It is understood that they lived for a short time at Westlake. I have been unable to find out any information about that time. The McNamee family lived at number 12 Acton Cottages. At least one member of the family resided there until the houses were demolished before the lake was filled in 1964. Bill McNamee, Ben's younger brother, lived at Acton until September 1956 when he and his wife Norma moved to O'Connor, where Norma still resides. Bill died in 1999. Bill told me a small amount about life in Acton. He remembered that the cottage, number 12, was located across the road from the tennis courts. The family were very good tennis players. He also recalled the times as a child when he would climb through the fence and play on the golf course that was located behind the cottages. He used to play every night after school. He became a very good golfer and was a member of the Royal Canberra Golf Club for many years. He remembered swimming in the tourist camp swimming pool in the river at Acton. He thought the swimming hole was towards Lennox Crossing. He remembered the old hospital was next to the British High Commission, the original Canberra house. The courthouse was around the corner from the cottages. He remembered the policeman Sergeant Scott and Roy Broadrib. He attended St Christopher's School and recalled sometimes walking there across Capitol Hill. Some of the people he remembered were George Ryan, the Dudleys, the Stewarts, their next-door neighbours, and Mrs Dixon at Westlake. During the Second World War, Bill and Dick served in the Army in Papua New Guinea. Ben served in the RAAF and was posted to England, where he flew on Sunderland flying boats as a wireless operator air gunner. At the end of the war, Ben returned to Australia with his new wife, Joy, my mother. Here is Joy's story. After leaving England on the 30th of November 1945 aboard the Rangitata, Joy, expecting their first child, arrived in Melbourne on, in January 1946. After leaving Spencer Street Station, Melbourne, they travelled overnight on the Spirit of Progress to Yass Junction, there was no train to Canberra from Melbourne, and arrived at 5am on the morning of 5th of January. Joy was horrified when she got off the train at the railway siding, and her first thought was that Ben had buried her in the bush, part of a comment her grandmother had made to her just before she left England. Don't let him bury you in the bush. Yash Junction was in the middle of nowhere. There was only the railway line and siding and not a soul to be seen. After about ten minutes, an old Model T Ford with a fabric roof and tray arrived. It was the mail truck and also their conveyance to Canberra. Joy sat up the front with the driver and Ben sat on top of the mail bags in the tray at the back. They travelled to Civic where the mail truck dropped them at the Sydney building. They then caught a bus to Acton. The weather was very hot and Joy was very tired after the long journey. When they reached Acton, all Joy could see was the tin roof of the house that she was to make her home until they were able to move to their own. She was shocked and apprehensive as she had lived in a brick and tile home in England and thought she might be living in a tin shed. It was a far cry from bustling Brighton where she had lived most of her life and the family she had left behind. As they neared the cottage, Joy began to feel better. It was a delightful cottage with a large hedge and very pretty. William, Ben's father, was there to greet them and made Joy feel most welcome. Ben was still in the Air Force and had to return to Sydney and wasn't demobbed until March 1946. 
Joy spent this time getting to know her new family. Ben's parents, William and Margaret, brothers Dick and Bill, and sister Alice, who were still living in Acton, and Mary, who visited regularly. Ted had married Iris Bell Chambers and no longer lived there. She recalls the neighbours living in Acton at that time were the Gardners, the Wares, Stuarts, McTaggarts, Sleemans, Ryans, Seatons, Angus's, Hattons and the Chathams. The Llewellyn stables were at the back of the cottages. Ben and Joy lived at Acton until December 1946 when they moved to their own home in Turner. Chris, their eldest son, was born in April 1946 at Canberra Hospital, only a stone's throw away from the cottage and the place where Ben's father William worked. Alan and Cheryl were also born at Canberra Hospital after Joy and Ben moved to Turner. Ben and Joy remained in Spencer Street in Turner until they moved to Queensland in 1982. Dad died in Queensland at the age of 72 in 1988 and Mum continued to live in Queensland until her death in June 2011 in her 90th year. Even though there is no physical evidence of the Acton my dad grew up in, when I visit the National Museum with family and friends, I always proudly tell them that this is where my dad grew up and that it was a thriving community. And of course I can show them our family's name inscribed on the memorial that is located near the museum.